Hey guys, this is Justin. Um, I guess for the next part for this computer, um, I decided to go ahead and well purchase my first upgrade for it. Um, I guess since I've built the computer, uh, I guess some of the relevant information to what led up to me making this change was, um, well, obviously I got a uh, 8700K in this computer, so it's a uh, six core hyper threaded. I mean, I'm sure I've already told you guys all about this thing, but um, because it's a case queue, it is capable of being overclocked. So I went ahead and, uh, well, I didn't overclock it because that would void my warranty. But, um, yeah, I guess uh, one of the things I found I needed to do was, hypothetically, if I had overclocked it, um, I increased the, uh, I would have increased the uh, clock by 100 megahertz and running an Ida 64 stress test and I ran these for at least like a half hour maybe 45 minutes um, not a serious you know stress test for it but enough to get temperatures to stabilize um, before I'd ever clocked it I was seeing probably about uh, I don't know mid 60s in the uh, as far as, far as uh, CPU temperatures were going and after I raised the overclock by 100 megahertz with the built-in, uh, I guess the Aorus overclock, um, I was seeing temperatures up in the mid-90s or so. So um, that concerns me slightly. I know 8700Ks tend to run hot when overclocked. I was kind of surprised that the temperature went up by that much. Um, I'm suspecting that it's probably got something to do with, you know, in order for... Again, the, uh, the built-in Aorus overclock to be stable, they're probably putting more voltage to it than what it really requires. Um, so, I mean, if I go ahead and manually tweak settings, I could probably knock that back a little bit. I need to figure out how to do that. Um, I almost went with an Asus motherboard in this computer, but whenever, um, whenever I actually went to buy the, uh, the motherboard, it came down to the fact that um, the Aorus motherboard was on sale. It was about $40 cheaper, which, you know, in computer parts, especially in the motherboard, saving $40, I think is a significant chunk, unless you're looking up in like the $500 range or something like that, then maybe, you know, 40 or yeah, $40 is, is chump change at that point. But, um, um, yeah, one, one of my big fears was I'd heard things about the BIOS for the, um, for the gigabyte board, not being quite as intuitive as what it is for Asus. And I haven't worked with the ASUS BIOS yet, so I can't sit here and say, you know, the ASUS BIOS would be way easier. But um, so far, I mean, I've, I've clicked down, you know, I've gone through everything in the BIOS trying to find the settings for this. And um, I'm probably just not confident in myself enough yet to uh, to go in and start messing with settings to see if I can actually get the, um, get the manual overclock settings unlocked. Um, I mean, a little bit of research, I'm sure, and I could find that. But uh, for right now, I'm just running the uh, the out of the box or server clock, and not happy with the temperatures, because now we're seeing them up in. Uh, I can't remember if I said if I told you what uh, what temperatures we were seeing, but they're around like the 90, mid 90, somewhere around in there. Um, of course, you know, still another 10C to uh, what is it? T junction max, I think it is. Um, but. Yeah, still a little bit closer than I want to be, especially for that small of an overclock. So, um, obviously, one of the things I've done was I went with the um, the stock fans when I first built this. So, my first upgrade is going to be uh, a fan upgrade. So, what I ended up deciding to do, I'm really scared to put this up against the acrylic because I'm afraid it's going to scratch, but I'm going to risk it for you guys. Um, so, the way I set this up, I don't know if this is going to be glaring real bad or not. I hope not. Um, but the way I set this up was to use both. Uh, well, because I really like uh, fractals fans. Uh, I'm not a big RGB junkie. And in my first video, I probably came off as one because it's this is my first computer. You know, it was, it was cool for a couple of weeks. Um, I switched through a few different color settings, and now I'm just kind of getting jaded by it, I guess. Um... So I'm perfectly fine with these not having like RGB lighting and all that kind of thing. 
Um, and I've always tended to be more of like a function over form kind of person. Like it can be ugly. I don't care as long as it works the way it's supposed to and, and performs the best that it can. That works for me. Um, and that's, you know, pretty much exactly what these fans are. They're, you know, designed to perform, you know, the, the, at the peak performance of the, that a fan can and, uh, and not really, I'm not sit, yeah. I'm not gonna sit here and say that they're like bad looking fans or anything. I think they look pretty good, but um, you know, maybe all the aesthetic touches that all the other manufacturers are putting in maybe aren't there. But um, I mean, there's that whole anti RGB movement and that kind of thing. You know, the people that don't like it. So um, I guess for them, this you know is is it's the best deal anyway. So uh, you know, it's. Uh, I guess aesthetics is all kind of a personal thing. Um, but yeah, no, I, I really wanted it to be optimized for the actual uh, the performance. Um, so what I ended up doing was I stuck with Fractal because the case is Fractal as well. So I don't know if that really counts for anything for you. But um, I knew Fractal's fans and how they were kind of set up. And I wanted to go with the, uh, the Venturi series, which is... I guess kind of their top of the line fans that they offer. Um, so they offer, you know, two different sizes. They have the 120 millimeter and the 14 millimeter. Um, and then the HP series, which is short for high pressure, which is their pressure optimized fans. And they also sell the HF series, which is their flow optimized fans. Um, this particular rig, the way it's set up, um, my CPU cooler takes 120 millimeter fans, so that's what we're gonna stick on that. Um, the case fans, I can use 140 millimeters in all those. Um, what I'm going to attempt to do um, is put an HP fan on either side. So this is, there's actually still a fan in that box. Um, so I do have two of those fans. So we're gonna put one on each side of the cooler. Ideally, as long as everything fits. This is all, I haven't test fit anything yet, so we're gonna find out as I build here whether or not these uh, these will actually go in the way I want them to. But um, I do have the two pressure optimized fans to go on the CPU cooler. And then I have five flow optimized fans for, uh, I'm going to do two intake fans on the front, one intake on the bottom. And then I'm going to have one exhaust at the back and one exhaust at the back, back here on the top. Um, I'm not entirely certain if that's going to do weird things with the airflow to kind of have like a cross pattern going. Um, the other thing I, you know, kind of made sure of was to have more, I wanted the extra intake fan over, over the exhaust. That way I could, you know, create a positive pressure and hopefully be pushing air out of all the cracks and everything in the computer instead of sucking it in and pulling dust and everything in. Um, that's, I guess, one of the things that you're supposed to try and shoot for when you're setting up your fans. So that's, I guess, what I did. Um. I mean, I guess that's kind of the thought process behind it. So without too much further ado, I think it's time to start tearing apart and we're going to put a couple fans in this thing. So uh, just start by making a little bit of room here. If you guys could forgive my uh, all my cables and everything I got running everywhere, I'd try to set that monitor up so I can kind of see what's going on, but I turned it away from you guys so it's not distracting. So hopefully it's not too distracting. Um, so I'm just going to take these fans in down here. Uh, good place for you for now. Let's go for right here on the floor. Looks good. And let's do the same. Actually, I can set you right up here. <clears throat> Get rid of the. Actually, let's see. Let's set you right here. It's probably going to be in the way of doing the back panel, but I'm assuming I'm going to have to do the back panel to get the front fans to hook up because I think I stuck that. Uh, that connector, that connector should be on the back side of the computer. So, thumb screws out first. All right. Actually, I'm going to do this while standing up because, like I said, I'm terrified of scratching this acrylic. I've heard enough horror stories. Watch, this is going to be the part where I do it. Way so good so far. Here comes the part where I break it. There we go. 
I'm gonna rise set you without having to worry about getting you screwed. What am I right there? Okay, so there's that out of the way. I'm gonna go ahead and pull the back. exactly what I was afraid of doing with the front panel. You guys didn't get to see. <laughs> I mean, I didn't drop the <laughs> the panel. Um, okay, so the first thing we need to do, I think, is going to be to pull this front panel off, and that should give us access back into these front fans. Let's see, I also got to remember where I've got these hooked up at. Like I said, I did no ahead of time research on any of this, so I'm going in blind. Hopefully you guys don't mind too much watching me struggle and make an idiot of myself. Uh, you would say you kind of want to come back up here. Okay. You would just do this for this one because we're in the back. Okay, I think what I'm going to do here is probably break these loose by hand. Just from time working on cars, I always like to get things broken loose by hand, and then after that, we can use the power stuff. It's kind of interesting trying to see with light on the wrong side of the fan. I'm like blind back here by the light. Make sure you guys are let me know what you think about these kind of build logs for the computer and that kind of thing too. If if I should talk less about why I'm doing what I'm doing and that kind of thing. I'm obviously, you know, ideally I'm making these to suit you guys. So let me know what you think. Watch Paul use one of these, and now I'm I'm sold. Oof, I might have that backed out a little more than I thought I did. Come here, screw. Screw still fall back into the case. I wonder how close I actually had all these to coming out. I bet you it was fairly close. Say. Okay, so there's a learning experience for you. Don't do that. <coughs> Get these right up here. Just put black screws on the black mat. Probably really smart. You know, something else I probably should have done beforehand was got you guys kind of a sound sample of some sort of what these fans were like to start with and what they're going to be afterward. That's one of the other things I'm really kind of concerned about is just how much extra noise I'm going to be making with these. Actually, now that I'm looking back in here with the light a little bit, it's starting to build up a little bit of dust, not much. Not really too bad. A little bit over here on top of the hard drive. That should be okay. All right, so first fan. Okay, I guess um, the other thing to bear in mind here is that you have, I don't know how well you can see that, there's, uh, hopefully that's close enough, there's arrows on the bottom of this fan here for which direction airflow is going to go and which direction the rotation of the fan is. Um, if those aren't on there, basically you can always just kind of look at the uh, the struts going across the back of the fan here. That's usually your exhaust, your intakes on the either or on the opposite side. So we'll make sure we orient the fan correctly, unlike I did with the uh, with the CPU heat sink when I was building this thing. Let's uh, let's actually pay attention this time. Uh, okay, <clears throat> let's see. And the other thing to consider is how I want to route this cable. 
kind of make it to where there's less excess cable to deal with. I'm going to go ahead and shove this through here now. Because that's kind of what I did with the other cable, was shove the excess back behind. But this way, I can just shove the cable back through here later. Where you are. So let's kind of pull you back over into place. Preferably not knock the antenna off. Okay. I'm going to set this one a little bit lower than what the stock fan was because that way it's a little more in line with the CPU cooler. Um, obviously we're going to have a little bit of airflow headed up from the bottom toward the top so there's going to be a little bit of an angle to it. But okay. I'm going to shut up and get a screw started here so we can drop this thing. The other thing that'll be interesting for me to figure out too, I don't pay attention to how many fan headers were on this board. I may have to use a few splitters. Um, and as a matter of fact, I think I might end up using a splitter on the, uh, the CPU cooler fan anyway. Oh, that was one of the other things that really kind of excited me about uh, doing these fans also is that this... Um, the CPU cooler is a Hyper 212, and it's not the LED, or sorry, it's not the Evo version, it's the LED version. It's got stupid red lights in it that I cannot turn off, and that when I was kind of using the RGB functions of the, the motherboard, um, it didn't, it clashed with uh, whatever I was trying to set the color as. So that'll be nice to... I'd rather have no light there than the wrong color light, or light at all, really. Um, so that's a that's an upside to this also. Let's see, get you started. Okay, you should come now. <clears throat> Let's not carry two screws at once because that's a good way to drop one. And who knows if I'd ever be able to find it. Started. <coughs> if I'm coughing a bunch and it annoys you guys, I'm sorry. I'm sick. Kinda getting over it, I think. Starting to suck it up. Okay, so that's one of the first differences I'm noticing in the stock fan and these fans is that um, as I'm tightening the screws, they're not really they're not really getting a whole lot tighter um, because the factory fans had plastic corners on them, and these fans, these Venturi fans, have rubber, which will be nice for dampening sound against the case. So hopefully, we won't be having as much fan noise coming through. Ideally. Okay, so I'm going to consider that fan in. So there's one down. And only six more to go. You guys are probably sick of listening to me already. <laughs> because of my less than ideal lighting situation here. Get this handy pocket light around. Um, well, not that you can read it anymore, but this used to say forge light on it. That was... Uh, this was part of a gift I received that Rick Hoback donated to Auto Interest, and I ended up winning a, uh, I think it was just like a door prize kind of deal. My ticket got pulled. Okay, so there's my connector, and there is... So on these, uh, you can kind of see down here, I'm afraid to move you guys, but I might break the... Uh, the camera rule and move you guys here. Um, actually, I don't want to because I'm going to mess up my angle. But um, eventually, I swear, I'm going to get another camera and this is going to be a lot easier for me to show you guys what's actually going on in here. That's one of the major issues I've run into already that I've already noticed with these videos is that it's very hard to show you guys decent uh, video of what's going on inside the case without, uh, without taking the camera and moving it. Um, 
I have been talking to my little brother about buying a camera off of him. So once I get that done, maybe I'll actually be able to use the GoPro that I'm filming on now as my close-up camera, and I can kind of move you guys around. But basically what you're going to have down here is um, there's four pins off of the uh, off of each fan header, and down below three of them, there's a little uh, piece of plastic that sticks out, and your fan connectors here, as you'll see on this side, have two little tabs that stick out of them there. This is only a three pin, so this isn't PWM. This is uh, just regular uh, non-PWM. Let's go with that. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, that uh, that little piece of plastic that sticks up has to go in between those. So uh, when you saw me break out the light and I'm looking back in there, that's actually what I'm looking for is that little piece of plastic sticking up so I know which side that I need to stick that, uh, that fan connector on. And... Gonna be toward the bottom. There we go. Yeah, it's down in the hole. Okay, so we should have a good connection down there. All right, so now I want to pull all that cable slack back. Into the back again. We want you back up there. Okay. That should be good. All right, so there's fan number one. Simple, right? Now, upon further inspection, I'm realizing that I need to grab brackets for my other fan for the CPU cooler up here um, and who knows where that's at <coughs> that's the other thing I can do here real, real quick <coughs> figure out where I have this fan connected at uh, down here in the bundle of wires in the back there it is it's hidden amongst a lot of wires but I think Remember right, there should have been I don't know if we're seeing a couple of wires back here for that actually. So there should be additional connectors back here for the front fans. Um Okay. Or extensions, I guess we would call them. I don't know why I thought it was a good idea to put these back in the box. There it is. These should be as simple as just sticking the new fans on them. Okay. This is the upside to hanging on to all your boxes and your hardware. The downside is I look like a pack rat, but you know. At least I actually have the parts I need, so I'll take it. Um, okay, so let's... Like I said, I think I want to do a splitter on this one. So... Somewhere here, I have a fan splitter already here. And it is ideally a PWM fan splitter. Okay, so what I'm going to do, and this bundle of wires off the, off of the fan was never ideal. I don't know why I didn't just shove them in this thing back behind here, in this grommet, but I didn't. So... Now's the ideal time to fix that, right? Kind of wondering if this is going to clear that ram or if I'm going to have to pull a stick out. Why are you having to trouble me so much, fan? I just want to replace you. So you can once again go back to wondering what your purpose in life is. <laughs> I'm quite concerned about bending fins on the cooler doing this. One 
other side. There's the and I believe that was quarter. Yeah, just to make this easier, I probably should have pulled that. Um, as you know, it's so hard to take that out and put it back in and off. Okay. I'm going to leave you right here. Please don't do bad or anything. Because I would hate to see the price to replace you right now. That's the other thing. I mean, ideally right now, my... My next upgrade should have been to fill this PCIe slot <laughs> for the graphics card, maybe. But, man, prices on everything's ridiculous right now. Yeah, it's appreciated. Neighbors are playing music. Hopefully that doesn't distract you guys too much. Don't copyright me, bro. Okay, here's bracket number one retrieved. I need to look back in my box here too and see if, if I have a second set of... As much as it's a pain taking that tape off, I'm sure it dampens some sound. But on second thought, those new fans have rubber corners on it, so I don't know that I even... Eh, I'm probably not going to worry about it. Whatever excuse, I need to be lazy, right? <laughs> I never thought about it too, but if you can hear background noise right now, um, my laptop is running in the background. That's, um, that's one of my future planned videos is to take the laptop coolers and kind of compare them and see which one runs cooler and compare noise levels and that kind of thing. Um, it probably won't be anything fancy as far as noise levels go because I don't have a, like a decibel meter or anything. So there's, uh, there's fan number two out. Be a fancy LED fan I can use for something else. Um. Watching some other videos, I've kind of gotten interested in uh, maybe doing a build with uh, an HTPC, and I don't know. I've kind of really liked the idea of a media server. Not that I'm going to have money to do this kind of stuff anytime soon, but uh, yeah, I don't know. I'd like to, if I do a an HTPC... I really want to do one with a uh, AMD build because I've built on Intel now and I want to see what it's like to build AMD. So this one I'm a little concerned about because it's missing a pin out of it. So I don't know if that's... No, that's... Okay, so this is the one I want on the front. Um, I guess my main concern is to... Make sure that I'm pushing. I would think you'd, you'd gain more from pushing than you would from pulling. Or, I don't know, shoving? <laughs> uh, taking air from inside the cooler and trying to push it out. Um, yeah, I guess that would technically be a push-pull configuration. So yeah, instead of pulling, um, I should think you would get better results from pushing. So, um, yeah, it's just kind of weird that that, uh, that fourth wire is missing there, so I don't know if that, this is actually, that's the, um, 
That's one of the normal three pins you have to use for non-PWM fans. I'm going to assume everything's probably perfectly fine. I don't think it's going to be anything wrong anyway. But, uh, yeah, ideally... Both pins would function the same. I'm not sure if they will. I suppose we'll find out. Do this the right way the first time. Yeah, so that should be in taking and shoving through. Let's see. And we're going to have the brackets oriented like this. So is that where... I want my cable. I actually want my cable. Okay. Yeah, if I want it up on top, that'll be fine too. Because I think I'm going to actually do the same what I was talking about and shoving more cable through the grommet. <clears throat> so let's start installing this bracket. <clears throat> because I guess as I kind of evolve this build, hopefully my cable management gets better. Um, I don't think I did a bad run for my first try at all. I mean, you could always improve. That being said also, um, I guess one of the things I keep meaning to point out, and I don't because I forget, um, I really hope none of you guys take me for a, there's a train going by now too. There's all kinds of random noise. Um, but yeah, don't take me as an end all be all source of information. Because I am probably more new at this than a lot of a lot of what I imagine my potential or my viewers potentially could be. Um, but I mean, even if even if maybe when I first post this video that I don't have a whole lot of tech enthusiast types and more car people. Which I've found a lot that car people kind of cross over into the tech world quite a bit. Um, probably more so than vice versa. Uh, as much as I feel bad about saying that. And I'm probably going to be shown by somebody that I need to eat my words. Um, yeah, it seems like there's a lot of car people that are mostly tech enthusiasts. Um, and I think it's just kind of a love for tinkering in general that causes that. Okay, so you are going to be in the front, and you're going to be mounted on this way. So I'm going to stick you on here. This kind of brings to light the interesting issue I'm going to have putting the fan on on the back side. <clears throat> Could be really hairy. Um, all right, so fan number two. Now you guys get to watch me struggle with the boxes. These... Uh, These were a little bit less than fun trying to unpack. Not that they were terribly hard or anything. Let's see, those are screws, so we'll need those. I just don't like tearing up boxes when I unpack things. I guess that's what I get for working in a parts store and having to care about what returns look like and that kind of thing. There goes the refrigerator. You can listen to that now, too. <laughs> this is obviously an ideal location for, for doing this kind of stuff. I'm actually in a, uh, a one-bedroom apartment, so like pretty much everything's in the same room. So hopefully that doesn't bother you guys too much. Um, the other thing you may hear going in the background also, I have my heat on right now. I told you about the laptop, so the heat may kick on also. My phone will probably go off next. Whatever I can do to make this a less enjoyable experience, I guess. Um, okay, so now we want this one facing in this way. So I want brackets up here. And then obviously opposite that because it's going to be kind of hard to... Install a bracket any other way. I just noticed one of my stickers is gone already. I wonder what it's sticking to. 
You guys are probably pointing and laughing already. Oh, no, there it is. Uh, I don't know what I'm going to do with you. The always dangerous slide the screws out of the bag trick. It's a good way to lose them in the floor. So I guess suffice to say, with all this background noise going on, that if you guys ever take me for somebody who doesn't care much for sound, you're probably right. Because there's plenty of it in here anyway. And in comparison to my laptop, with the cooling pad on it and the blower extractor fan and all that kind of stuff, it's probably quite quiet anyway. I almost dropped my screwdriver and I just thought about it. It would probably be terrible if I dropped this solid chunk of metal on my table. It would probably be less than ideal. I guess this is technically like a dining table. To, uh, to kind of up the less than ideal factor. <laughs> the I'm just making it work factor. <clears throat> okay, so hopefully... Hopefully I've got enough room to install this. Are you not grabbing? That doesn't make any sense. Well, the Hyper 212 is supposed to take a 120 millimeter fan, and these are 120 millimeter fans. So the size is correct. I don't really know what else to do with them. I'll bet you the rubber corners are just giving too much. probably allowing that. <clears throat> so I guess, again, further less than ideal things happening. So I really don't know what else to do about that. Um, I guess we're going to ignore that that's a problem. Which is probably not the proper way to go about this, but I'm going to do it anyway. And plug that in. Um, if there's any known fixes for that, feel free to share. Um, maybe I can learn something off of you. And which one is CPU fan? Not CPU option. Top is CPU fan. The plastic connector reflects all the way over here on the right. Let's start putting this on here. So these HP12 fans are also PWM controlled. So these will change speed. I guess it's by motherboard settings. Back there. I wonder if I'll get down to even the connector gear on the back. There's one out of the way. We'll shove number two back here. Let's start pushing up more wires through. Um. And all of my stickers are gone. Okay, they're all over the place down here. Um, for anybody who's, I guess, less familiar with computer building than I am, um, the idea behind cable management is to help 
keep airflow, I guess, at its peak to all of your components that need it. So hopefully that should make sense why that's important. I'm just kind of rambling at this point, trying to pay attention to what I'm doing here. But um, if you have a bunch of cables in the way, obviously you're not going to be able to... Uh, not going to be able to get as much airflow to the components that need it because you're going to have cables dangling in the way. So if you have a bunch of cables up here, I mean, it's going to prevent airflow from getting where it needs to be. That's way better than the old setup that I used to have. So that's cool. We'll let those hang out back there for now. I'm going to stick, I'm going to stick you down here. That way I don't accidentally try to, like, uh, cable manage the Oh, you know what I just realized? This paint's gonna be fun. Um, so that way I don't try to cable manage my uh, Wi-Fi adapter. Okay, so maybe if I get these ones first. I should probably put my RAM back in now too. I'm gonna end up forgetting that so you guys can point and laugh when I do that. Um, I think I'm going to leave it out for the time being. That way, if I need more room to move around, okay, that's because I'm pushing on them in the wrong direction. Uh, let's see, maybe if those look like they're meant to hinge back there, this, if I can just come in this way, there we go. So if you know how to operate the pieces that you're working on, it's a lot easier. Okay, so there's that. Logivate covers out. Now I just need to put my fan up here. Um, this up here is also capable of doing a 140 fan. Uh, looks like there's two mounting points back here in case you want to use a 120, so you should have your option of whichever one you want to use. <coughs> Cooler looks way beefier with two fans on it now, doesn't it? I like it. Okay, I'm gonna take you before I get stuff mixed up and set you back here where I had accessories from the 120 millimeter fans, the HP fans, the whatever I feel like calling them fans. Okay, so I'm gonna stick you here for now. Those I will need. I'm just going to throw those on the floor. That's probably a wonderful sound. Hopefully. Hopefully no one sympathy vomits because I probably just made your night horrible. <laughs> And if you weren't thinking that that's what that sounded like, now you are. So you're welcome. Okay. <coughs> well, you've got three fans done. Out of seven. I feel like I'm doing something. Obviously, the ideal situation here is going to be cable toward the back. Where is my nearest fan holder? That should be CPU. Oh boy. Oh boy, oh boy. Well, I may have routed that first fan wrong. Because now in order to set up a good fan up here, I really want to plug into that top header that I've got used for the first fan. So I may end up rerouting that cable to go down here to this header. And then I'll just have to figure out how I'm going to hide the cord. <laughs> or the cable, or whatever you want to call it. Uh, let's see. So let's go ahead and take you back out. Man, I struggled so much to get that connected. Now I have to pull it back out. What a sad day. Um, okay, so I think what I'm going to try to do is 
weave this back and forth back here. Minimize how much cable light stays back here. So I'm gonna plug you in down here. Turns out this one's way easier. A little bit of cable sticking out of the top of there. I don't think it looks too horrible. I'd rather have it at the top because when you put the side panel on, I feel like more of the top gets covered up unless you're kind of looking at it at an angle. So, okay, now we're ready to install this fan. And again, this is going to be an exhaust fan. So, I want this pointed up, cable in the back, I think. That way, basically, I can run the connector. Yeah, because it's going to run straight out the back. Okay, so this is how we're going to do this. Work. The cable will fit out there. Okay, actually, I'm not sure how you would stick a 120 millimeter fan up here because. This is definitely for a 120 or something wider, or sorry, for a 140 or something wider than a 140. And I am a dumb and did not get any of my screws out yet. Before attempting to mount fan, empty screws from bag. I'm one of those people that will usually consider it just because that sounded like a like a step from a manual. Um, I'm one of the people that will consider it an egregious offense to not first read the directions before trying to install something. But just as a disclaimer, <laughs> these did not come with directions. So I'm just kind of doing this all willy-nilly how I feel like doing it. And I suppose this is one of the joys of only having two hands. If any of you know how to create a third, let me know. Sure when I'm working on vehicles, that would be nice too. Okay, so I'm going to get you started. And I'm going to get the opposite corner started. Essentially. And I'm going to install this on the back cover. Because I feel like, or the back vent, because I feel like, uh, yeah, come on. Because I feel like the air is going to be flowing backward. Or toward the back of the case, I guess you should say. Um, and also, I should think, if I ever actually end up being able to buy a GPU, it should be sitting about right here. So hopefully this is going to be shoving air up and it's going to hit kind of, well, there's a really loose. Um, don't mind that. It's normal, I swear. That's the way it's supposed to be. Um, but no, hopefully that'll kind of blow... I'm really, the thing I'm worried about is this vibrating back and forth and causing extra noise. But before I get derailed anymore, um, I'm kind of hoping the airflow will come up this way. And then, you know, the fans up here are going to be pushing air backwards. So it's probably going to move back this way a little bit. And hopefully it'll be getting more to the GPU. And, you know, airflow is also going to be pushing back anyway. So maybe these two fans back here can kind of help drag a little more air out. Anyway, let's, uh, if that made any sense at all, maybe I owe you a cookie. I don't know. If I ever see you, let me know. <laughs> because everybody likes cookies and ice cream. And I'm probably going to hate myself for putting that in and not plugging it in first because I probably took away even more room to put that in. Um, 
Okay, so you... At least I don't have a radiator to deal with. And that would be way worse. Um, the next smart thing to do, if the fan would quit trying to chop my fingers off, uh, I'm going to try and push this back through this grommet just to get that started also. We'll do that and create more wires in the way of where I'm trying to work. Okay, now remember from earlier that that plastic piece that sticks out is on the bottom. And actually, I have a halfway decent view of this from on top now, now that the covers are gone. I think that's how I'm gonna try and line up Connector actually. Whew. Yeah, this was dumb. I should have plugged that in first. Oh well, 2020 hindsight sucks. Uh, hmm. How did that go? We're not. Yeah, there we go. Okay, we're not. Now that I've got the extra cooler fan in the back, it makes this way harder to push on. Okay, there we go. And it's all the way down. Finally. Now we can watch you stop looking like an idiot. Okay, there we go. And then wires out the back. Probably look for cable management, okay? I'd say that looks all right. <clears throat> okay, cool. So there's, what, four fans in? Now we need to do five, six, and seven. Um, the front ones I should be able to do from the front of the case by the looks of things. Because I think that's, yeah. Yeah, those are done from the front, okay. So I will not have to pull that drive cage, which makes me happy. Um, actually, I don't think there's anything else that should stop me from Putting this ram back in either, so I'm gonna do that before something stupid happens and it like breaks or something. Uh, I would say the offset of that is a little more toward the bottom. And that also matches the other gun that I've already got in, so that would probably be a good way to check up some. Do I have you started? No, I do. Okay. I feel like it's putting bad, bad stress on the motherboard. Ooh. Come on, Lee. Luckily, motherboard cutouts are a thing, and I'm able to support it from the back. I don't know how bad that is touching the solder joints on the back side. Hopefully it doesn't cause them to rust faster or anything like that. Okay, that should be good and seated. Looks like it's all the way in there. Okay, so that's good for that. Um, now, fun times. In order to do the bottom, make sure we got to tilt the computer backwards. And it's only fun times because I'm lazy. Really isn't that big of a deal. I'm just working in a small space here. <laughs> um, okay. So whenever we do, let's see, the shoulder has to come out of the front. <clears throat> I think. Maybe. Is that bad that I haven't cleaned my filter yet? Okay. Why don't we just tilt this up anyway? not smash the Wi-Fi antenna. Okay. Uh, 
Okay, you're probably designed to come off of the front when I actually have this panel open. Don't move the camera. something hopefully you didn't move okay no, that's a piece of my filter I should stop pulling on that uh, still looks plenty clean to me um, so you you go that right there looks like a good spot for now time for the next fan These, uh, these 140 millimeter fans also come with corners to adapt them to 120 millimeter mounts. So I probably could have got a 140 millimeter fan for the CPU cooler, but I guess the downside to that would have been the fact that the fan would overhang the, uh, the cooler. So therefore, I did not see a point. I, I thought it would probably actually hurt to do a 140 millimeter fan on the cooler that's designed to run a 120 millimeter fan. Because you're going to have your shroud around the outside of the fan is going to overlap the cooler, possibly, if it's actually optimized for a 120 millimeter fan. And you're going to lose airflow out the sides. So to me, I thought that was probably a better idea to leave that be and stay with the 120 millimeter. Okay, so I said I wanted the cable in the back. And this thing is ruptured out. I'm going to have to redo the exhaust fan at the back of the case. I just realized I installed it backwards. So, like I said earlier, <laughs> unlike we did in the first video, we should pay attention for this one. Can't find... There it is. Okay. And, again, get the screws out of the bag before you try to melt the fan. I swear I learned from my mistakes. <coughs> I guess tonight I'm just a selective learner. <laughs> okay, so you on the end of there. I can see you still, so let's get you started. Man, I've got that that back fan wired in where I want it and everything. Oh well. I guess I don't think it's a massive amount of work. Connector's already in and everything, so we'll just try and swap that around and reroute all the wiring and everything if everything's still plugged in. So now we're actually gonna put this duct bottom dust filter to use, I guess. The uh the power supply I had directed up into the case. So it hasn't been pulling from down below. We're trying to blow air out down below. And I guess the uh, my thought process behind that was that I eventually wanted to use... Like when I was actually first putting this computer together, I was already kind of planning out the fans that I wanted and where I wanted to put them. And I knew I wanted to use this as an intake, so I didn't think it would be a good idea to take hot air out of the power supply, shove it down below the case, and then suck it right back up into this fan. Because you're going to have, it's going to be a lower pressure area around this fan, and that's exactly where your 
hot air coming out of your power supply, potentially. I mean, whenever I get a GPU and all that kind of thing in here, if those ever <laughs> become affordable again. Um, now, I say that, <laughs> I'm sure they will. Um, you know, the mining cards are already being developed and that kind of thing. So, hopefully we'll get our GPUs back soon. Um, okay, so there's that fan installed. Um, I'm going to go ahead and stick the dust filter back in place. <clears throat> this is all riveting to watch, by the way. Hopefully you guys are enjoying this. If there's anything also that you think I could do to make this a little more entertaining, um, besides <laughs> breaking my stuff or something like that, feel free to make suggestions. Instead of, I guess, just saying your video sucks, it was boring. <laughs> Not that I'm disagreeing with you. Okay, so we can close this back up now. This panel always amazes me how heavy that is. That, uh, that sound deadening, and it really makes that panel feel substantial. Okay, so that fan's in place. So now the work from underneath is done. And I can just take this. I'm going to connect it up. I'm going to run it up with some of these wires down here. It kind of blends in with the rest of them, I guess. Let's see what the back side can pull this cable through. Actually, I think putting it out there show you right back up through here and the connector it's going to go up here somewhere there we go so there's the bottom fan installed now I need to undumb my dumb and fix this back fan because like I was talking about the struts to stick out and I don't know, you guys were probably noticing that. And Again, finding me a good target for your pointing and laughing. You probably already noticed that, and I did not. Uh, there's one fan, or one screw. I wish the fan was out of it that easy. I would have already had this done by now. Um, because I thought I was going to use that, uh, that electric screwdriver a lot more. And as a matter of fact, on these rubber corners, these screws are not going to be overly tight. You are still loose enough. Okay. So, if I'm taking them back out, that probably would be a much easier route. much quicker okay so I want those that way but that cable to stay back there kind of interesting the rubber mounts with the screws going through them you'd think that that would never be a sturdy way of holding things in place but seems like it's going to work so somebody's confident in it uh, so let's okay there's all of my cable for that so let's take you and push you back up here You and also push you in there. That's a hinge. Oh, and I actually have to 
Let's see this premium show up now. I think I will. Okay, so let's work you and Ray. This appears to be a very tough corner to work in. <laughs> Can't imagine why. There we go. And Q heater. Oh man, I might have just barely not enough cable to make that work. Yeah, I don't. Okay. So, hopefully that stays somewhat restrained back in that quarter and not ending up inside of a fan. That would be less than ideal. Um, okay. I don't think it's going to go anywhere. Okay, so now we have one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so we have five of the fans in place. Everything appears to be the way I actually want it this time. Okay, so now we just need to do the two up front. Which for that, try to rotate the case here a little bit so we can see what's going on. For that, this front just pops off. This part is probably one of the least fun. <coughs> just because these are plastic and you always feel like you're going to break them. I say that like I've done it a bunch. I haven't. Hey, look at all that dust. Where did you come from? And probably <coughs> I'm going to have difficulty with this because all of my front panel cables have already been cable managed. So either I have to uncable manage those. Yeah, I'm gonna have to uncable manage those because I don't feel good pulling on cables. Okay. Um Let's do that, and this, because we're going to need in there to do the connectors up anyway, so we'll do that, and now we can move a little more cable, and a little bit of cable to work with here, and in there, while you're being this difficult. Set you off to the side here. <coughs> okay. So, yeah, definitely screws in the front. Oh boy, I'm going to need to get into my hardware for my case here because these are longer screws. set there. I'm going to undo this Velcro strap. That I had done, I think, specifically for this cable. I'll leave you there because I may end up using you again. And we're going to unhook you down here. To remember that hole because we need to push stuff back through there. Um, what did I do? I don't know what I did with my other fans. Um, I'm gonna grab my extra hardware here also that I need. Once again, the pack rat life is win. Um, 
should have some screws in here for that. There it is. I see them. That is what I need. The rest of you can get back down in there again. Actually, on second inspection here, too, I might end up having to swap out drive cages. Um, originally for hard drives, I can't remember. I think I was going to be, or I thought I was going to be okay with this. I just wanted to add one more 4 terabyte hard drive. The big uh, three and a half inch mechanical type. Because I'm poor. And, uh... I thought I was going to be okay. Um, after actually using this system a little bit and realizing the difference between the 960 Pro and the, uh, this is like an enterprise grade uh, uh, HGST drive also. So it's not, it's still a mechanical hard drive, but it's not like the slowest mechanical hard drive out there. It's still crazy how much faster the 960 Pro is than the mechanical hard drive. Um, I've been using uh, PC Mark 10 to do some benchmarking on this, and uh, actually, I think I still had like uh, well, because we actually saw sc scores improve. Because I, ha I originally had the program installed on the hard drive, ran it there, and then I switched it to the uh, to the M.2 drive, and I saw like twice the score out of the M.2 drive, which is insane. The difference in the uh, the performance in those but now I kind of it kind of made me long for like that middle space so that if I have something that I want to use frequently I can kind of stick it on a I want to use a uh, like a regular SATA SSD because uh, again I don't have tons of money for the M.2 varieties ideally that's what I'd use but I don't really have that option um, but I want to stick I wanted to stick a one terabyte 850 Evo in here and I think now we're up to the 860 Evo. I think those just launched recently. Um, and then I got to doing a little bit of digging on it. And the Intel 545S uh, SSDs are actually a little bit quicker and they're cheaper. Um, those are only available in a 512 gig variant. But I can still buy two of those for less than what I'm going to buy a 1 terabyte 850 Evo for. So I think I might actually end up sticking two Intel 545S 512 gig SSDs in here. This is like current and this changes all the time. So don't expect this to be the final layout. But I also wanted another four gig drive, or sorry, four gig, uh, four terabyte drive. Um, so I'm gonna end up having a total of four drives and three cages in right now. And this did come with the other five bay cage. I'm probably gonna end up having to stick that in here. Okay, so anyway, you have received more anecdotal information about what I want to do with this system and where it may go. Uh, you're welcome. <laughs> okay, last two fans. All right. Are there enough fractal boxes laying around? Josh didn't give me any of this, I swear. <laughs> this has all come out of my own pocket. Hence why I complain that I'm poor, and I'm probably not going to have the stuff that I want, and the stuff that I can get is going to have to do. I need to get in that box of hardware and see if I have any small fan screws in there like these. Maybe I can kind of keep those all in the same place so that they're easier to tell what they are later on down the road. Because right now they're just kind of in little unlabeled bags. Okay, one fan. Looks like a good spot for you for now. And two fan.
these are supposed to be at first I was like oh a little extender I don't know what I'm gonna use an extender that small for these are actually supposed to be for reducing the speed of the fans I guess I don't know I guess if you're doing like a, well, I guess like an HTPC or something like that where you're hopefully not gonna be hitting it as hard like you can actually permanently reduce the speed of the fans uh, I still can't fathom why you would want to because if I need full fan speed, I would like to have it available. But I guess maybe noise isn't for everyone. Not that I think these are going to be terribly noisy. These are uh, the bearing setup and everything in these fans. And all the little design changes they made in these is interesting. Um, they actually have a magnetic bearing inside of them to kind of help. Uh, reduce, I think it's axial thrust. Um, so, going this way. Um, the struts are kind of at an angle like that. Like, they're weird offset. Instead of going straight across, they're kind of at an angle to reduce noise. And then you can kind of see the little, uh, almost kind of like a knife edge looking deal cut in there. And that's also supposed to be a noise reduction thing. And then there's a small raised area out here also. And that's supposed to help keep uh, air attached to the blade. So it's kind of like a gurney flap on a plane wing or the back of a, or the wing on the back of a car, either one. Um, I mean, it's kind of interesting. I know, I know Josh is a car guy, so I mean, you kind of got to wonder if, uh, if that isn't part of what inspired some of these, uh, these changes to the fans to make them quieter and more functional. But, you know, maybe some of these ideas were in mind, and we thought, oh, we should do that with these fans, and I don't know. I'm here saying at this point, so instead of putting words in Josh's mouth, I guess uh, I should probably shut up and let him make that point if that's, uh, if that's the case. No pun intended. <laughs> Mounted like that. I'm going to push one of these through here and hope that it lines up correctly. I feel like if I over tighten these, it's going to try and pull the corners off the fans. So not do that. Not too much anyway. Let's see, let's get fan number two started. Well, I'm two for two. I don't know if you guys can see or not, both of those uh, twist ties ended up down on the floor. That second one did quite a good job of disappearing, so I'll have to figure out where that went. I should spin that around the right way also. So you can quit yelling at me now. <laughs> Don't do it again. <laughs> Which worries me now. Did I? Is everything okay? <laughs> I think everything's the way it's supposed to be. lined up quite well which I guess shouldn't be overly surprising man this thing's packed in here with these two fans I really like the color scheme these fans have and how well it's going with the case I mean I guess if you put fractal with fractal it should look good it's that very minimalistic design that they're known for okay should be two intake fans put into place. And I'm going to pay special attention to my optical drive that everybody says is no longer useful. Ooh. 
Well, that's where my dust was coming from. Apparently, I have a fair amount in front of the uh, meat steak already. So I need to pull that out and clean it. And I guess that gives you a good idea of how often I'm going to have to clean these, um, which I think it's only been... Maybe a couple months, two and a half months. Which ought to give you guys an idea of just how far off I am of actually having these done. Um, I'm actually still trying to make the uh, the Miata deer damage video. And I've already had to redo that. Or I'm going to have to redo that. Which I think is what has discouraged me from uh, making further forward progress with that. Uh, let's see. And actually, I think... panel should pretty well be ready to go back on. I'm not going to yet because I don't want to tear it up, but let's see. <coughs> One. Okay, so there's your struts. Both of your struts are out here. That's three fans. Four, five, six, seven. And everybody's set up correctly. Okay. So now I just have to plug in the two intake fans. I'm not crushing any connectors or anything here. And then we're going to, I'm going to do a little bit of cable management. Um, originally, I had these run up along here. And in this strap, these, uh, these Velcro, Velcro cable ties are absolutely invaluable. Instead of having to mess around with uh, you know, zip ties and cutting them and not having the option of reusing these things, I have the option of reusing these things. Hopefully that stays put. Okay. There's nothing I can do about this cable. It's not as good as it's going to get. All right, so I think the only stuff I've got left to manage is this corner right up here. The other thing that I'm concerned about... Ooh, you know what? These flat cables I could probably take and run behind the 2.5-inch drive uh, tray here. Oh, you know, on second thought, I wouldn't have to... I will not have to, uh, ah, words. I won't have to put the other drive cage in because I've got the two and a half inch cages back here. If I have enough tubes that can make that work, I don't know that I'm going to. I guess back here it really doesn't matter as much. This is me just being super finicky and anal and all that good stuff. Um, I mean, obviously, you're not going to have a whole lot of airflow back here. There's no, you're not going to see it. But I guess it's really just for me. I know it's back there and it bothers me. Um, I need another Velcro strap. So, do I have, hey, look. <clears throat> I pulled Velcro straps off of, uh, a couple of cables I had running through the floor and stuck a channel down for those to be in. So I never put them away. And this is why. This is this is definitely why I had this all planned out like this. <laughs> I I knew I was going to need these. Right right here for the computer. On this desk. And stupid little things like this make me happy. Um I think that's cable management done. That was easy. Um, a lot easier than I was expecting. So at this point, I just need to put the panels back on and fire it up. Um, I mean, I could let you guys watch the panels go back on. I don't know that you want to. Uh, <laughs> you've probably had enough. And I have a lot of editing to, to do, and I'm sure all that kind of thing. So um, 
you guys have hung around to this point, I really appreciate you hanging out to, I guess, make my first upgrade with me. Um, Hello to my dragon. Okay. That's okay. This is okay. <laughs> um, but yeah, I really appreciate you guys hanging out. Um, if you have any suggestions, perhaps not standing directly in front of the camera and blocking all view of everything, uh, that would be entirely valid. But if you guys have any suggestions... Oh, uh, okay. <sighs> I was just thinking... Where did I stick those thumb screws for the front panel? Um, so other than uh, not knowing what you are doing, sucks. <laughs> but I get that. <laughs> um, yeah, if you guys have any suggestions or anything. You're not supposed to do that. <laughs> uh, okay, um, this may actually be entertaining for you guys. Maybe I should uh, keep rolling. Okay. There we go. You get started. If you don't thread in very far, then you get a few ready to start as well. But uh, yeah, if you guys have any suggestions, leave me some suggestions. Uh, as always, you know, likes and subscribes are always appreciated. Because, I mean, hopefully if you guys like this kind of thing, I mean, I do intend to do more of it in the future. I don't know, maybe I can just sit here and kind of talk with you and kind of walk you through what I'm doing. And if you're looking to doing something similar yourself, maybe maybe this can be of some use to you. I don't know. Um, hopefully it'll be of some use to you. And maybe just kind of some of the discussion I'm sitting here talking about as I go through building this and... Maybe it'll make some sense to you, and uh, maybe we can make some use of it also. Maybe it'll remind you of something that you forgot to think of. There we go. There's that. the look of the fans on the cooler way better now. I'm excited to go hear this thing start. <laughs> Just because I want to know if it's massively loud now. The other thing with this or this case that I've had is that I've got a slight rattle now that I mean, I've pretty well narrowed down to being this side panel right here. Oh, what did I do? Miss entirely? I didn't see what that moved. Um, there's a small rattle to it, so i got to figure out what I'm going to back. I'm going to have to stick something to back the, uh, the back side of the case in to keep it from rattling. Which I'm mildly disappointed in, especially being as how this is supposed to be a super quiet case and everything. But um, I don't know, maybe it's just something that's unique to mine. But uh, anyway, <laughs> I'm gonna cut off here. I promise. Um, yeah, I really appreciate you guys being here. Um, you know, let me know what you think if you want to see more. And I guess thanks again. We'll see you guys later. Next one. Are you still here? Bye.